there's this um this Elvis documentary. You can probably find it on YouTube. It's pretty fucking hilarious. I don't know if this should be on air or off air, but it's pretty funny. I mean, we just can be like B roll. Yeah, but it's 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 pretty funny. Like there's a story where there's like a part in there where I guess during the time there was like a space shuttle launch or something like that, and he was in the car with his manager or whoever. It wasn't it wasn't the made him pull over, right? It wasn't it wasn't it wasn't Tom Hanks. It wasn't, it wasn't the Tom Hanks character. But <laughs> I mean, was Tom talking, Hanks is in that rocket ship. But they, but they were just like they were just like, yo, did you hear about the shuttle launch? Whatever, whatever. And he was like, no, man, I was knee deep in. <laughs> and they were like and they were like yo the cameras are going he's like what friend do you have in jesus and it's like we're just hearing elvis talk about it right Sweating like a motherfucker. Yeah, he was like i was he was like i was knee deep in <laughs> yo, about nothing podcast may have content and language that isn't appropriate for some listener discretion is advised and james will jones and this is the All About Nothing podcast. Recorded from the GOG Sound Studio in Lexington. With Barrett Cooper, Zach King, and Trenton Clark. Welcome, Nothing Nerds, to the All About Nothing podcast. This is episode number 176. I'm Zach King, joined by Barrett Gruber and Trent Clark. It's nice he included us. I tried to. Thank you, sir. Please Hi. subscribe and share the show. That's how we get new listeners. Please also consider supporting us financially by visiting theallaboutnothing.com and becoming an official member and proudly calling yourself a true nothinger. We have a bunch of membership tiers available that give you early access and exclusive content, including the Trent tier. There we go. $100, Trent will do whatever you want. Once a month. Once a month. You get you get access to Trent for 24 hours right. once a month if you pay us $100 a month. Yeah. Uh, it is... Uh, Trending towards potentially being slightly uh, not in Trent's favor uh, and, and illegal, but uh, in slavery. Very I, close. Look, well, let's just point out that Trent created this tier. It is. I did. He, he requested it. $100. Yes. He so, requested it. So that's, that's that's what it is. I feel like we could get back. So, <laughs> so what type of stuff are you refusing to do? Uh, anything uh, but play. Uh, all but play. See, y'all, y'all trying to go nasty. I'm trying to get my car. I'm trying to get my car washed. Like, like, you do the trick. Like, 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 you do the trick. Like, 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 yeah. Do, do yeah. some motherfucking laundry. Yeah. 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 I got you, man. And fold them because you know yeah. you do laundry. You just, it of just course. stays in yeah. your bed. I'll stay there until it gets finished and do my thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got you can watch first take. Yes. I'm going to propose this. I'm going to propose this. I think. I think. You know, for a hundred dollars for twenty four hours, could we set you up like in their garage or in their yard while they do yard work and well, you DJ the whole time? <laughs> oh, okay, I was about to say set me up. Yeah, a uh, hundred dollars. I Look, used to charge a hundred dollars an hour. It's I'm not butt. saying. I'm not. <laughs> that's a steal. That's a steal. That's a steal. You know what I'm saying? That's a steal. You know it's all for the. It's all for the podcast. Yes. Uh, yes. Well. Twenty percent is for the pod. Eighty percent will go to my pocket. Thank Some, you. Somehow that, that that that's probably not going to equate because the money comes straight to me. Ah, uh, but you know, we'll get there. We're friends. I, I'm sorry, I derailed this introduction. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're all good. It's all about nothing. Podcast for a reason. Go ahead, Zach. So, right back where you were at. Also, mm. if you're listening to us on Apple Apple Podcast, uh, and you think we're worth it, yeah, give us a review and five stars. If you're not on Apple Podcasts, what are you doing? And give us a review where you can. Share the episode with your family or friends or follow us on Twitter at AAN underscore pod and Facebook at All About Nothing US. The internet. <laughs> is that that's what it you, says? That's where you can find us. Oh, okay. I was going to say this. I thought you was turning to me. People, <laughs> please. <laughs> Uh, just search for the All About Nothing podcast or visit the website for links, theallaboutnothing.com. And with that out of the way, we have a special guest, Preach Jacob. Yo, yo, what's going on? Oh, Welcome. Man, best. Welcome. The yeah. best. Thank so, you all for having me. Uh, before we jump into everything else, let me do let me do some shout outs real oh, quick. Oh, do your thing, brother. Uh, thanks to the Casey West Columbia JCs, Jimmy Wall, O'Shawn McClendon, uh, Shelby Spencer, and all of the actors and creators over at the Hall of Horrors. The, the uh, Dark Harvest is, uh, is the name of the haunt this year. Uh, Walter Price Road, Casey, South Carolina. You can check out hallofhorrors.org or uh, cwcjcs.org. Uh, also, uh, goodness, look at all the reaching. They're so good. <laughs> Had a great time over there. It's an audible listen. Well, we did have a we did have a really good time. Just added some effects. <laughs> uh, also, and 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 this is sad news. Uh, but New Brooklyn Tavern's building did sell, and mm. New Brooklyn Tavern is going to be forced to be moved. Uh, there has not been an announcement as to where it is that they are going. Uh, but here is your update for what's coming up anyway. 
Uh, Tuesday, October 10th, RC Drive, the Static Tour with Hey Nothing. Friday, October 13th, uh, Cola Kings and Cola Kings in Things, uh, Rocky Horror Drag Show. That's uh, that's going to be something to check out. I think that'll be fun. Are you going? I uh, n- October the 13th. Yeah, negative. Okay. We got to find the last show that they do. It's going to be sometime middle of December. And then we got to wow. take a piece of the building with us. Well. Right, the building's no. not going anywhere. Train. No, 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 no. Don't we got to take. Don't incite. But we, we could all go in there and do the numbers. Again. Don't incite. We don't take a piece time. of the building. I, pee everywhere but the toilet. I just yeah. like that. I yeah. take the toilet seat. <laughs> For anyone no, bro, that's you ever, die. you take that. Huh? Yeah, pretty much. They right. come yeah. find you. I mean, that's a national treasure. <laughs> Look, to be completely it's honest, a lot of famous ass has been on that toilet seat. Anyone, <laughs> I wouldn't. I'm not famous. So Think about it. They might make. They might have. They've been. They started off. You say Incubus started there? No, Amber Lynn was there. Or Cambreed and. I met Josh Hubbard from <laughs> Cody and Cambria there. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, anyone that's ever been to New Brooklyn, New Brooklyn no, Tavern. No, where's Prada played there? Uh, mm. I suspect you've probably gone home with part of New Brooklyn Tavern anyway because the it's building's true. pretty decrepit. Yes. I mean, it, I mean, you don't have those clothes anymore because you burned them. But Yeah, yeah. You walked out with a scent that was unforgettable probably. It was a fun that you don't have though. You that's just, true. If right. you didn't bring something home with you, did you really have fun? Well, that's a part of his charm too. I remember, yeah. I never forget, all right, KRS-One is one of my favorite MCs of all time and I remember um, he was brought here and I was like 18 years old and I was helping like with security for it and I got to interview him afterwards and my, imagine your favorite rapper on stage, he's on stage, there's buckets on the floor and while he's on stage, <laughs> water is dripping in the bucket. Wow. And my favorite rapper of all time looks up and he goes, wow. <laughs> I was like, South Carolina, we, we, we fucked up on this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and the stage was so small. Every time you saw one of your favorite bands play like a 45-minute, mm-hmm. 50-minute set, they're just dying puking in the back. <laughs> they're just like, the lights can't be here, bro. Yo, but at the same time. If it's a lot of people in there, the shit looks epic. Oh, it's it right. Is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, they can make that all. They they make that look real full, real yeah. quick. Yeah. Like Thanks. how many times I've seen Susto and Sequoia pr- play there? I'm just like, it's the best. It's literally the best. I mean, yeah. For for a particular artist, like for an example, I was there with Hannibal Burst, which goes by oh, yeah. um, Musho Tune or whatever his uh, rap name is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he did one hour of comedy, one hour of of performing. That was a perfect venue for him. That's you know awesome. what I mean? So yeah. That's awesome. It's it's literally ingrained in anybody who's in the scene with music in yeah. Columbia, South Carolina, West Columbia. That is the joint. Right? And, and and if you're a musician, that's probably the first place you pay Absolutely. play. That yeah, facts, yeah. facts. Yeah. And hopefully you had a tetanus shot before you walked in. There. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like five points. I, I oh, won't exactly. go to five points unless I'm up to date on boosters. <laughs> and New Brooklyn's moving to five points. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> is that is that's that on on brand? You don't want to talk about Sharky Day, <laughs> yeah. brother. Oh, when, when, my, when my when my boys from uh, Terrible Things played there, and he's like. Yeah, I'm gonna leave you a, um a, the VIP pass at the front, and I was like, I could come around the back. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly don't how to get don't in. Don't worry, but he's like, no, they have them. I was like, I, I'll take it, but I could come find you too. <laughs> so uh, the venue's not that big. <laughs> <laughs> it did get you like two dollars off beer, so it was a win. Mm. Wednesday, October 18th, uh, <laughs> certainly so in Coyote Island. Uh, Friday, October 20th, uh, MSSV, Brandy, and uh, The Butcher, and $1,000 movie. So uh, check out newbrooklyntavern.com for tickets uh, and, and all the details there. Well, like I, I, said, I look for w- where they go. Like, I'm, I'm, And they said they're going to find another spot. Yeah, they're definitely going to find another spot. West Columbia really wants them to stay in West Columbia. So it'll be new, new Brooklyn Tavern. Yeah. Uh, also, mm, real quick, want to mention, uh, Friday, November 4th, this is coming up soon, the Wednesday, the, the West Columbia 6th. The annual fallback fest uh you're going to want to check this out you can go to our show notes links for uh information on that uh but on the music stage uh 76 and sunny prettier than matt uh, as far as food and beverages goes you're gonna have state street pub new brooklyn tavern is going to be there wico bottle and beer garden the hideout in west columbia uh d's wings cafe strudel black rooster eight owls upstairs uh tons of others including uh vendors from three oaks florist and interiors ed's editions bookstore spa 131 State Street Trading Company, just a, just a bunch. And then I mentioned the live uh, mural art. I still feel like that's going to be people he standing. Thinks, he thinks it's nude body I, paint. Not <laughs> nude body paint, but I just think people are going to – I think it's live people doing art, like, like in front of them. But they, they think it's just going to be um, – I think it's going to be in it. a mural. Like they're going to paint like a, a mural. Yes, uh, like okay. in front of Like maybe like on a building or that's something. Fair. You know that's what fair. I mean? When is that? That's November 4th, Friday. I'm going to be a little cold out I'm there, going. right? It's the perfect time. Bro. Yeah, it's perfect time of year. So uh, our guest this week is an artist, DJ, writer, and based on everything I've seen and read, an ambassador for the capital city. 
Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina, and uh, celebrating the release of his latest album, uh, Francis. Yes. Uh, which you can stream across Apple listen Music. Listen to that all day today, by the way. Oh, my goodness. Apple Music, YouTube Music, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Two today. <laughs> <laughs> and our two listeners are going to love it. Mm. Colum- I'll say, it's you and my mom probably listen to it. Today, Columbia, man. South Carolina native, Preach Jacobs. Welcome, Yo, Preach. Thank you all for having me. No, well, we got to get this out of the way here. before everything gets started. Uh-huh. South Carolina or Clemson? Oh, Lord. <laughs> um, There's one right answer. Okay, well, good. Because I was going to say, I, I've been on the record writing about my disdain for Dapple Sweeney. Um, okay. So, yeah. So, I've, I've written some columns for the Free Time slash Post and Courier. Um, not a big fan of him. Good. Yeah. Good, 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 good. He's a good cheerleader, though, don't you think? I mean, like, couldn't you see him wrapped up in, like, a, a, dork, a full, bro. like, jumpsuit and uh, just running around pom-poms? I, I feel like. He's great when they're, you know, when, when they're doing well. But when the rabbit got the gun, I don't think he knows what to do. Nope. I, I'm not a big fan of, of of coaches that are, like, ringing out college kids in front of cameras. And he was, like, real, yeah. real big for that shit. And I'm mm-hmm. like, dog, the only reason this dude's not eating your lunch and throwing you yeah. <laughs> throwing you out the house yeah. like Jazz on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is because he has no power. Right? <laughs> yeah. and, that, and that's why it's a big deal when it's, like, like somebody like Pete Carroll that can – Coaching college and the NFL, yeah. I respect mm-hmm. that. A lot yeah. of these college guys, they can't do it. You know, Nick Saban couldn't do it. You yeah. know, um, 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 what's the guy we used to Spurrier. have? Spurrier couldn't do it. Yeah. You know, um, Matt Rule so, couldn't do it. <laughs> right? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> the Panthers fan in the building. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm Matt an Eagles fan. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah. So like, I, I just, you know, I just never liked that showboating that he was doing and all that type of stuff. So, but that's, you know, neither here or there. It doesn't, you know, it also doesn't hurt that my job is right next door to um, William Bryce. So yeah, yeah. I'm at, I'm at SCE TV. So I do um, the fundraising stuff. So for the local NPR station oh, very cool. or, or the local PBS stuff, I'm the one asking for money. So, so it's like donate now to be a sustaining star. Mm. Oh, yeah. there you go. So that's so, me. Ding. Sorry. Next, <laughs> next time. Yeah, here, have at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think, got, bet- I think between Preach and Barrett, we got a battle of the radio voices. Facts, facts, facts. I'm, I'm going to admit, it, it, Preach's voice is fantastic. But you know, <laughs> I can do your answer machine. Just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I, <got> you. <laughs> I like it, man. But you know, he, you know, he, he wants to be a loser. He got to be a loser, man. Because you know, uh, you just, know, we, oh, we fight for championships. We you know here what I'm saying? Go. You're sitting right where we are. Championships, so. baby. You know what I'm saying? When we <laughs> have we, a bad we, season. We played number one, number 21, That's number That's okay. 15. But you know, we fight for championships. Who's your squad? Oh, Ch- Clemson all day, baby. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry you don't want to be a, a national championship winner. I'll but tell you, you, know. you want to know the funniest thing that FSU game? What's up? The only time he ever like went out and got somebody, he was like, I'm going to go get our kicker who never kicked shit. <laughs> <laughs> Put him back on the team. It's his time to shine. What did he do? He shanked the shit yeah, out of that kid. Yeah, he shanked the shit out of it. And I'm like, God, up, there bro. he is. You can't get mad. Hey, what, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> that? There's nothing you can do about The game's that. evolved. Dabo does not. Stick to your morals and drown. Correct. You see how many people we've used from the um from the NIL or whatever, like zero. Little, yeah, we haven't switched nobody. Nobody. He, he, brought, he doesn't he, believe in that. He and brought we're like not going to win with that. He, he brought like Bear Bryant's great with that. grandson. No, you cannot <laughs> win with that. Great <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, I was at Alabama. I sat on the bench, but you can come on here and sit on our bench. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you originally from Columbia? I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. Yeah. Born and raised. Born and bred. What Where? part? Yeah. Lord boy, this is, this just give me a high school. That let me know. Nah, because you're gonna talk shit when I say Spring Valley. Oh my, uh, I got your colors on, <laughs> right? Yeah. Damn. Damn. I'm a, Damn. O- Oakland A's. Look at him. <laughs> Damn. Okay. You do like, like Mr. Oakland A. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. O- Oakland did real good this year. This is a got Gars hat, guys. This it's a, it's, it's they're, they're, I figure Oakland's probably one year away from being moved to Vegas. Which yeah. I think yeah. I'm all in favor for. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Uh-oh. it's too hot in Vegas to play fucking baseball. Not if you put them in a dome. Okay. I mean, okay. Uh, it, you okay. know, I give you that. Tampa, they got the money for that. Okay, I will give you that. Unless Tampa wins the World Series this year, they're moving too. And now, the, like the Giants play in San Francisco, nighttime falls. It is cold, bitter. Bro. Mm. Yeah, it's bitter. Uh, that's that's rough. So, what do y'all of, think? Of, I know we're going sideways, but what do y'all think about that dome that's in Vegas? Like. I love Have it. Oh, seen, the, like, the, the YouTube, YouTube concert? concert? Yeah. 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 It looks it looks crazy. Why does YouTube get to do everything first? Because they have a residency. Yeah, I was going to say they have a residency. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm talking about like, wasn't YouTube like one of the first people that were like Force. on your phone? Yeah, they forced yeah. to put the music on your yeah. phone. Yeah, 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 like like why is YouTube always first? <laughs> I'm not understanding. Because you, YouTube's like legend status when it comes to like 
I don't know, old white people rock. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> I just, mm. like they have some I would have thought Ozzy Osbourne would have had that spot. Well, you know? I, I I can tell you what the Apple shit happened is Jimmy Iovine. Yeah, like mm, that was yeah. that was like one of the groups that like he really really got put on with, oh, and okay. so he's like, hey guys, that's how he talks. He's <laughs> yeah. like, you know, I got this thing coming. Yeah. Put it on. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and just to just to point it out, I'm working on the edges mustache right here. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you look like the people from uh, what's what's the damn. The one Super that wrote the, uh, the I Like to Ride My Bike. Who, who's on that? What? <laughs> You're talking about Queen? Yeah, Queen. Queen, Queen. Oh, that, was, that was the song Freddie that you picked out. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, if he has a bike. <laughs> and he likes to ride it. Oh, <laughs> he has a bike. Boys, he likes to ride, like yeah, bicycle, to ride yeah. my bicycle. Yeah, they had mustaches like him. Well, well the Freddie Mercury. Yeah, yeah, the whole yeah. band. The whole band. Didn't that song turn into Fat Bottom Girls? It's, yeah, like at the end, maybe at the end of it. but. So, Queen, Queen was fantastic. So I know we've been doing all this like movie trivia. You know who's supposed to play um, in Bohemian Rhapsody before the the Mr. Robot guy did? No, it? who? Um, Sasha Han Baron was supposed Seriously? to do it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, he was he was pushing for that for years. Yeah, he's, he's a little too tall for that role. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what movie. Why do we about his radio guy, guy. Look, look, Tom Cruise is five two and he's jumping off Facts. fucking mountains. Tom yeah. Cruise would be tall as shit when he be kissing them girls. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they, be, they be sitting down. They be sitting on a booster chair. Look, look though, Tom Cruise be so great in these Mission Impossible movies. I'm like, you know, maybe Scientology. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, they actually the can <laughs> film good movies. No, maybe they're doing right, stuff right, with the money. All right, right? Read, read my thetans. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Have, Let me grab the two cans. Yeah, the can. have, have y'all watched the Have y'all watched the latest uh, Mission Impossible movie? Yeah, I've seen it. No. Fantastic. It's crazy. It is so good. Top like, was good. It's like it's yes. like three movies in one. It's like you 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 get the beginning of it. That's the first movie. The second movie and the third. It is it is so it is good. Absolutely and, insane. And you know that if Tom Cruise didn't have that dirt bike made for him, his legs would be hanging off the pegs. <laughs> Just be. Do you know he he burnt. I want to say he burnt 18 or 19 of those dirt bikes going off so on that cliff. Ridiculous. I'm like, Tom, someone put a net and donate those to me. No, Tom was like, yeah, let's do it again. <laughs> let's do it again. One He's like, you've destroyed 15 CR250s. I think he made a decision at some point in time. This is my theory that I don't know how accurate it is. I think he gave up trying to be an Oscar winning actor. Sure. Right. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think I know when it happened. Uh, Risky eyes, business? Eyes wide no, shut? No, 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 Days no. Of Thunder? No. <laughs> this guy, even all right, and it's funny. Like Days of Thunder, and um, that's his best movie. And what was and what was the other one? There was another Tropical Thunder. Rain Man. It felt like Tom Cruise was doing these movies where it was kind of like there was a, a Will Ferrell joke where they were basically like studios would just basically say Will Ferrell playing basketball, and then you get uh, semi pro. Yeah, Will yeah. Ferrell doing NASCAR, and they were doing that with Tom Cruise for a while. They yeah, just yeah. throw out mm, something random, true. but. I think Last Samurai, when he thought that was going to be his Oscar moment, oh yeah, he didn't get nominated. Kim Watanabe got nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and and Tom Cruise got so angry he fired his manager. And then after that, he just said, "Fuck it, I'm just going to jump off of mountains." Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah, but, that's but fair. let's be honest, like Last did Samurai. he really but like think for real, for real though, the only white man in an all Chinese movie. <laughs> That's based yeah. on a true story. It's Japanese, by the way. Oh, a Japanese. Yeah, Japanese. <laughs> but he thought he was going to no, win. You well, done, you done, bro. But he you thought done. he was going to win out of everybody. Well, the, it's based off a true story. Yeah. Which was, it made that that made that part. It's not like Matt Damon's like, I'm going to go defend the wall of China against Mars. Yeah, <laughs> that one was wrong. Pedro Pascal. Yeah. You're just like, nah, this don't check. At least that one was a true story. Okay. It, it was? Okay. Yeah. And, like, and Last Samurai was a great movie. I, yeah. thought, I thought it was a really, really good yeah. movie. That's it wasn't better than Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Really? When, yeah. I, when I went to California for that <laughs> yeah. youth leadership Watch program. Watch that. <laughs> also with Kim Watanabe. I think we yeah. see yeah, a theme yeah, yeah. right here, right? Yeah. Well, great we, movie. We, he may have been pigeonholed. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. That, was, that, was that, go, that was that Silicon Valley. Like We went to Intel, and they had this chip and this uh, projector that could do like 5.2 trillion teraflops in a second. Okay. And, and they were like, watch. And they put us in the, the like, it wasn't even a theater. It basically had the projector behind us. Yeah. But you could see the flies. It was before 4K and HD and shit. Right. And he's like, oh, this projector will never be available to anybody. <laughs> They're like, oh, this is like a $5 million projector. Mm. And But the movie they chose... Last Samurai. Oh, really? Yeah, they're like, watch the flies fly around the dead people. It was yeah, a, it was know. a beautiful, it was a yeah. beautifully done. Like the cinematography mm. was amazing. I think Edward Zwick or whatever his name was did it. Who did uh, Glory? 
that, oh, got, yeah. that got Denzel his first Oscar. How many times did you have to watch Glory in school? Because we had to watch it <laughs> all the time. Yeah, six or seven. What Dave, kind of, Dave, what? Dave Chappelle's oh, in Glory. <laughs> Dave Chappelle's in Glory? Yeah, he's just one of the dudes. One hundred percent. What was filmed here in South Carolina? So but Glory, but anyway. Glory was came out like the eighties. What was they? It was like, no, it was like, was like 90s. 90s. You must not know no. who our senior chief was. No Glory. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Glory with uh, Denzel Washington. Yeah, Matthew Brock. Yeah, Matthew we're Brown. talking about the same yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, it had to be the eighties. Hold on, this, this is no. We 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 were. I I, I was I was born in ninety one. Because yeah. he was born in what? 80, Listen, 80, yeah. Gl- Glory had to be in the '80s because Denzel started making his hits. No, we, we're 90s. not saying that we we don't think it was. We're just saying we that's had to watch it in it. school. Oh, okay, that's what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, but then you said Dave Chappelle was in it though. But like, I th- I'm looking at it right now. I'm I thought not, he was. Yeah, I, I thought somebody said '89 was Glory. Okay, bam. Dave Chappelle's in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I met I met Dave. I have like a video on his phone. He's really? like when he's cold calling people. Oh, I'm so. Jealous. And then he finishes the call saying "Wu Tang." It was really <laughs> great. <laughs> See, I tried to get these two guys to do uh, uh, prank calls, but they're not into it. Man. It wasn't even a prank call. Like, he was just calling on um for Andrew Yang, and this was like, oh. yeah, yeah. And he was like, uh, "We got a primary here. Are you gonna are you gonna vote?" <laughs> he was like, "Fantastic." <laughs> he was like, "All right, Wu Tang." You met my main main Yang. <laughs> he was mad it's cool though. I'm gonna, t- I'm gonna tell you the one thing about Dave that I noticed um, when he when he walked in is that if I didn't know he was coming in there, if I would have seen him on the street, I would have been like, "Damn, that homeless motherfucker looked just like this." <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, 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 he, <laughs> you know, he, he was rocking the homeless chic shit well, like. All flannel had oh, a this cigarette. Must have been right whenever he just denied that fifty million. <laughs> no, no, no. This, this, is, this is 2021, 2020, 2021. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, signed, he signed my record, and, yeah, and he said this to me. Cool. And he was signing my record, and he said, "What's your name?" I said, "Pre Shakeups." He was like, "That's a great fucking name." And I'm like, I was thinking of doing a hype sticker on my album that says "Great fucking name, That's hard. Dave Chappelle." Right? You should have brought your phone, bro. Please say that one more time. That would have been my tag on every damn. Maybe I got confused. Is Dave Chappelle him? was in Glory Hole. <laughs> He's like, not the same movie. <laughs> I see you over there. Hey, look, I see you over there getting real quiet. He was like, yeah. I swear to God, he was like just a dude oh. around the campfire. Okay, man. Oh, hey, man. He was you in that war so- movie, Saving Private Ryan. Oh, a Saving Ryan's Private. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I didn't think anybody was speaking about this. That's definitely a porn hook. Yeah. <laughs> Saving Ryan's Private. They were on Omaha Bitch. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> D-Day means something totally different. <laughs> and everyone was still crying, so not too different. <laughs> oh. Okay. It's all the men and women that lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Spring Valley, right? Yeah, yeah right. Valley. Okay. Go so, ahead. Go crazy. So, so the article, one of the articles I read on you was the, the one on the, uh, what is it, experiencecolumbia.com. Oh, boy. Uh, how long ago was that article done? What article was it? What did it say? Uh, it had you at uh, Papa Roach. Like the one of the one of the pictures you were behind the cash register at Papa Roach. Papa Jazz. Papa Jazz. Papa Jazz. I was sorry. Like, what the fuck, fuck is Papa Roach? I was like, I, was like, I really don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, what's going on? Into pieces, you know them all. So alive. Yeah. You really Jazz. do get a lot of names wrong. Huh? <laughs> I don't know why you call y'all. Just call everything Chief from here on. Out. You know what? Turn it off. Start it over. We're done. You should, you should just be like Chief to Chief, Chief, Chief. Chief. <laughs> Papa Jazz. Yeah. It's gonna I was like, I was like, a part of me was thinking, do you? Did you have an experience where you saw a bunch of roaches at Papa Jazz? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 Which maybe I love I it. I used, to, I used to work there. It's my folks. That's a yeah. nickname for it. Yeah. I used to call it back in the streets. Papa. Oh my god. So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't work at Papa Jazz anymore? No, no, no I couldn't. I, I couldn't because oh. like I was. Um, so I'm, I'm at SEE TV. Right. I worked there on weekdays, and I was working Papa, Papa Roaches on on, <laughs> on weekends. And then I and I had to I had to keep DJing on weekends. So I got tired of having to call out. So I was yeah. just like, I have to pull out. Yeah. So you, you said at the SEE TV, you do uh, the fundraising. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking, do you need? Do you, do they still do the type of fundraising where like people are sitting behind the camera and they're answering phones and whatnot? I, I shit you not. We literally had a um. I don't know if this is any like I didn't sign any NDA, so fuck them. So we literally had like <laughs> the job you're currently at. You <laughs> say fuck them. I mean, what are they gonna say to me? I'm not saying anything <laughs> wrong. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm not gonna say anything bad. I'm promoting them. Hey, if you want to donate now to become a sustaining star, call eight hundred two five six eight five three five now. All right, so fuck it. Fuck um, it. There we go. The plug. So 
So we had to hire, we didn't have to, but we hired these consultants to talk to us about what we should do for a fundraising and pledge. Yeah. And they're suggesting we don't do live TV pledges at really? all. Mm-hmm. They're suggesting all recorded stuff because live this is too much shit that can go up. too much shit that can go wrong. And it's not like back in the day with phone banks, right? Like yeah, it doesn't yeah. exist anymore. So Kanye like, kind of fucked everything up. Right. right? Like, <laughs> George Bush don't like black people. <laughs> 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 Mike Myers is just like <laughs> I'm Canadian, so <laughs> so yeah. So so uh, we, we do a lot of pre-recorded stuff now with radio, which we're going to be in radio pledge next week. So if you can listen to me, I don't know when this is coming out, but I'm going to be on the radio doing stuff. So they suggest next Monday. Oh, yep. okay, next yeah, Monday. Yeah, well, y'all going to listen to me on um, the local uh, um, South Carolina Public Radio Station. You're going to hear me on there talking, asking for money. So yeah, very cool. Nice. Yeah. I, no, I was just thinking if they still did the phone banking where the t- live television and whatnot, mm-hmm. you, you put the three of us up there. We'll we'll, oh, we'll get some like money in there. How, how are we going to lose? They're like, yeah. How do y'all lose money? How's the number <laughs> going? No, but here's the funny shit. I'm over here like, yo, send it to my cash app. <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, hey, oh, we going to have cash app, right? Because they ain't they open one. Like, uh, hey, I'm, just, I'm just listening to Bear going, y'all hell. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Zach's like, I got to do something with my wife. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me tell you exactly what happened. So I got to be anywhere else. We're at, the Soda, we're at the Soda City Comic Con, and mm-hmm. we've got like all our merch up on the wall mm-hmm. and whatnot. We're trying to sell. This guy right here pulls out a plaque with his <laughs> cash app direct to him, right. sitting right there right. in front of everybody. And a picture frame he knocked his mama out of. Right. I'm looking right. at this thing, and I go, "What is this? I, I didn't make this. What's this for?" And he goes, "Oh, this is my cash app." Okay, and I was like, "So people are just gonna walk by and go?" I mean, just because y'all didn't make. Well, how, there you go. Now, the question is, how much did you get? Oh, off of that day? No, I get nothing. All right. I, but say, I, I use it at my events, though. I'm going to say what I want to do. You know, like, you know, when people do their, gun, their GoFundMes, it's usually for, like, really, really terrible situations and yeah. all this stuff. It's the whatever, whatever. Correct. All right, that aside, I want to do a GoFundMe for a sandwich. Like, if I'm hungry, <laughs> yeah. like, if I'm at work and I just want lunch, yeah. but it's, like, in between pay periods and I want to go to Mio's and get one of those lemon chicken things or something like that, and I'm like, yo, GoFundMe, $15, give preach some lunch. And I did <laughs> I think people would feel like, you know what? I, yeah. I get you a cup of coffee, but you do it as a GoFundMe? Because you respect it because a homeless man that has a, 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 a sign that says, I am work, I will do anything for beer. You'd be like, okay. You have a trick I can give, I can give you. I can give you a, yeah, give you a couple of dollars. For hey, you know what I'd do? If you think I'd do anything for beer, you're going to do this laundry. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give you a shirt. That's some grass you, you need to so <laughs> right. you know what I'm Oh my goodness! I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, I found out that uh, the GoFundMe does actually have some sort of a standard as to what they'll allow really? on there. Yeah, and, That's and the a reason because I've no, seen hold on, lies. The, on the there. reason the reason I say that. Well, yeah, but if they can if they can facilitate the lie far enough, then they they can keep it on there. But the reason I say that was because I was completely honest about a GoFundMe that I tried to set up for the podcast, which was basically a unlock our bitcoin because <laughs> oh. we have a we have a bitcoin in an off we have like a, a tenth of a bitcoin sitting in an offshore account that, yeah. that all of this stuff so I, I i created a bit i created a a gofundme to try and um, to try and get people to donate a lot that i got a notification 12 hours after i created it after it had gone live from mm-hmm. from gofundme saying uh, we can't do this. We and they took it down. <laughs> well, maybe you shouldn't have said unlock my Bitcoin. I was being honest. I, I it sometimes would, you can't be honest. Well, there, if you, you want if you want to do the lunch thing, just <laughs> take a picture of yourself in your vehicle. Be like, I'm stuck in my truck <laughs> <laughs> with no air conditioning until I get out for just, lunch. Just spray water. Well, that brings up, yeah. that brings up the question: Is how quickly does GoFundMe actually like release that money to people? Mm. Like, Twelve no. hours is too soon. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> I mean, you got to think about where's that money. I mean. I know they're gonna be. It's gonna go to the right people, but the people that donated Allegedly. to no GoFundMe is like no, listen, New Brooklyn point. Tavern. That money's got to yeah. go somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. for they thirty-five got, they, cents they got a like donation. Thir- they got like thirty-five to like thirty-eight thousand dollars. I think, they, I think in the end oh, really? they got more than that. Oh wow! Yeah, some it's, it's up there. So they're still gonna get that money. I mean, they're gonna get a new building. So they didn't lie to us. Do y'all ever, um, oh, yeah. do do a Kickstarter or anything like that? We that did. I've never, I've no, yeah, oh yeah, I've I've invested in Kickstarters. But have you done one? Like, no. have you ever done? No, no. no. Well, when my dad got sick, we did a GoFundMe to help with that um, for a little bit. When people showed out, that's so, good. Thank y'all. Is it weird for you, like, because you're a rapper, right? Mm-hmm. So, with you being a rapper, when you see rappers having to have GoFundMe's after they die, right? Mm-hmm. Does it? And and you look back on their music videos and you see them flashing money. Mm-hmm. Oh. You get what I'm saying? Smoking 
big blunts, going crazy. It's like <laughs> it really, it really drives me a little crazy to be like, damn, you really wasted all that money. And then you look back and you see they have kids, I'm and then you really get depressed off. about it. Yeah, I don't know whose phone that was, but yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I mean, I don't get angry about it. I probably don't donate to the motherfucker, but yeah, but, but, but I feel like you know. I know the percentages is higher in the NFL, but I'm just gonna make up a number. But it's like they say that like the average NFL player, seventy percent of them three years out of the league, they got no money. Oh right, right. I've seen that. Um, because I think when you become black and successful, it's sort of like becoming the theoretical kamikaze pilot, where they teach you how to fly the plane, but they don't teach you how to land this motherfucker. Mm, right. So, damn. so, so they show you like you can make this money, but it's never. Here's how you invest this. Here's how you do this. Mm-hmm. Here's how you do that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, and I think that a lot of times. People in certain industries, they don't think they're gonna live long anyway. So they, you know what I mean? Like they're yeah, like, yeah. like anybody they got like tattoos on their eyelids and on their face. They didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like when when Lil Wayne gets these tattoos, he's not thinking he's gonna be 80 years old. Right. At some point, right. when he turns 40, he's like, "Fuck." Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. so so I think a lot of that happens. Yeah. Like so, I don't get angry because I just I just see people just don't know what to do with their money. Mm. Post Malone got a damn saw blade on yeah. his face. <laughs> Sorry, you know, like. Like, bro, you're always tired. We've seen it without that. I'm yeah. so, I'm so glad. I'm so glad he's a great artist because uh, Neil Brennan had his joke. He says when somebody gets a face tattoo, it's like they're telling you, "Yeah, working for minimum wage is fine." <laughs> right? So it's like, right? Like, like, all right. Yeah, but if he answers your first prize, you're like, "God damn!" <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I was just listening to you last year. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! What, what happened? So. I, to I guess to get more serious, uh, so <laughs> we got serious. We, we already. I mean, we got serious. Well, you you brought up oh, the GoFundMe. I was oh, like, I don't yeah. know what to say Trust now. Me. I was like, damn. A lot of GoFundMe's Trust, come out of, come I, after death. I, I I got serious stuff to talk about right, in, let's go. in let's the go. second half. But uh, uh, so like just just an idea. Who who are some of your inspirations as far as like what you what what you do musically? Um, I I'm a huge Miles Davis fan. Oh yeah. Um, um because I, I think that he's one of those artists. That you can kind of tell that his his uh, perspective changed many different times, right? Like yeah. he, he, you know, the cool period with his like the forties and fifties. Then you know it was a big deal in the sixties where he was basically like, "Yo, um, doing acoustic jazz and doing all this shit, this isn't the vibe." Because he saw like Sly and Family Stone and yeah. was just like, "I want to do some shit like that." Yeah. And so for him to make an album like Bitches Brew where he goes electric. He got just much as pushback as, as somebody like Dylan did when he went yeah. electric, right? Yeah, yeah. So seeing him do all those things, I, that was really inspirational. Um, Hip hop wise, you know, Jay is my favorite MC, but I think that personally, I, I have like these these places in my heart for Andre Three Thousand and 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 people like Scarface because there was a Southern sensibility where when I was growing up. Motherfuckers had to pretend like they were from somewhere else, right? Because because yeah, yeah. we had very low self esteem from where we were from, correct? And and so to see, you know, I would say when I think of people like Outkast, I would probably big up L.A. Reid and Babyface, right? Because they had the yeah. Face Records, mm-hmm. and what they did was they said we're going to start a record label where we get nothing but Atlanta artists. So mm-hmm. it was it was Outkast, it was Goody Mob, it was TLC, yep. it's Tony Braxton. Yeah. It was like all these artists that they turn into these mega stars when the industry at large was ignoring Atlanta. It was either like your, your motherfucking ass got to be from New York or you got to be from LA. So right. mm-hmm. so seeing artists in the vicinity of of the South was really really a big deal. Um, you know, um, and then then outside of that, like hip hop wise, uh. uh yeah, you already got top. You already. I was about to name ask you top five, but mm-hmm. you already named three. So go ahead and name the other two. I mean, gosh, I don't know if there's any. I don't know if there's any order. Like I don't want to be stereotypical. Like oh, Biggie and Nas and nothing like yeah. that. I I would probably say I would probably say the the MCs that probably impacted me a lot. I think the Roots impacted me a lot, and mm-hmm. I think I would say I wouldn't say a specific name, but I would say Native Tongues with De La Soul and Tribe. Soul. I think they hit me because it was like oh, you know. I can have the ability of of being kind of weird and being mm-hmm. and explore different shit. Yep. And I was a big like black history buff. So it was something oh, that yeah. it was, you know, it was embraced, right? And 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 my column for the free times, my award winning column for the free times. It's Ooh. called uh <laughs> Talk, talk that shit. <laughs> talk that shit. You get one of these? You get one of these, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need to laminate mine. You talking about award winning? Bring up the house. I'm talking about laminate mine. Somebody um, say award winning? <laughs> <laughs> but that, my my column is called "Fight the Power," and so like you know, right. the public like public enemy is is one of my influences. Oh, yeah. I think also, 
I grew up in hip hop at the right time where I think like a, what ended up happening with like hip hop when I saw it as I got older. All right. We, we, we get, get come into on, a little come bit. Come on, you good. Come on, you got time. So when I was growing up, I can watch artists like Beastie Boys, Public Enemy, De La Soul, NWA, um, Ghetto Boys. All of them sound different. All of them look different. And all of them are part of my musical diet with hip hop. Okay. So there was never this idea that in order to make hip hop music, you had to make the same type of shit. Right. I'm hearing everything. I'm yeah. hearing people mm-hmm. being political. I'm hearing people saying fuck the police. Yep. I'm hearing people saying I'm, I'm trying to fuck this chick. I'm hearing people saying, you know, black power. I'm hearing all of this. Yep. I'm even hearing Beast Boys saying fight for your right to party. And they right. come from a punk background, right? So what ended up happening, in my theory, because I, when I was like a teenager, I was thrown into radio. There was something that happened that I started putting the pieces together. So it's like around, maybe it could have been earlier than this, but around the early 2000s when I was in radio, I remember I was working and I was answering the phones and somebody was like, I want to request this song. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'm grabbing a pen to write down the song that somebody's going to request. And the person that was working the station stopped me. When I got off the phone, they said, hey, request radio doesn't exist anymore. They said, they said, we have a playlist we have to play. Yep. If somebody asks for a song that's on the playlist, then you take their name down and act like yeah. you played it for them. Right. But we have to play this playlist. Yeah. And so what happened with hip hop is that a DJ used to have the ability to break a record. Right. Mm-hmm. Used to be able to say, yo, this group out of nowhere sent me these 12 inches. Let's play it. That's how Cream by Wu-Tang got broken. That's yeah. how Diggable Planets got broken. And that's why you see even local DJs like Prince Ice, he got plaques on his wall because he broke those records. Yeah. Right. But not only did they give the DJs power to play them, it gave the public power to say, I like this shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all of that was kind of taken out of urban radio. Yep. And yeah. so yeah. and so when we people start saying, like, oh, a lot of rap sounds the same on radio, that's what happened. Yeah. You know what yep. I'm saying? So so I saw that if I if I didn't see that from the inside out, um, I probably wouldn't know it and probably just thinking like I'm not good enough, but it's not anything like that. So so once once I started realizing that like y'all are promoting request radio and you can't request when that motherfucker said it doesn't exist. Yeah. I was like, all right, something is totally, totally yeah. different. Would it be I, honest? I, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I learned that lesson in 97 <laughs> when I worked in radio. Yeah, right. Because, because like ultimately when I got my first job, like actually like on air as a DJ, not just doing time and weather, running, running CDs or whatever. Mm-hmm. That was one of the things that was the, that was the most shocking was because the computer system ran everything mm-hmm. and everything was in an ABCDF awesome. role. And, and like, People would call up, and, and I learned very quickly. Just tell them you're going to play it. Yeah. So like somebody would call me. Yeah, can I hear Garth Brooks' uh, Thunder Roll? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, sure. It's coming up next. And what <laughs> I do, but I would record every single phone call. So then, if by coincidence your song came up, I could plug your, yeah, I'm I could play you, your yeah. voice, it's the, and it made it sound like it. Mm. Yeah. It's the, yeah. It's it's the it's the biggest lie, man. Yeah, that, it's that's, the, the, that's the reason why I. I I didn't want to become a radio DJ. Nick has always asked me, like, man, Trent, won't you just work for the radio? I'm like, I could work, but they're not gonna like me. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna wanna yeah. I'm gonna wanna do something that they are not okay with. And I already knew that it, it like requested radio was going. I already I knew loved that. it. It became a joke. Like, yeah. I mean it, it became you know, like well, then, well that's the reason I don't want to take the I don't want to take the love away from it. You get what I'm saying? Oh, like that might make gone. me hate it. Oh, well, there's, there's, there's barely gone. there's barely terrestrial radio now. Basically almost all every radio station you hear in Columbia, South Carolina is Piped in via satellite. Oh Absolutely. yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I get the love by making my own playlist. Yeah, well, fair enough. And, and you I, know, I DJ. and I'm gonna tell you, there was something that, that changed. I think shifted as far as the artists concerned. Also, the only local radio I listen to is South Carolina Public Radio. Please go to. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I was gonna ask you too. The- Call 856 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, with the political influence and, 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 and especially with a piece like Fight the Power, mm-hmm. like that, the Rage Against the Machine. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It was like De La Roca and all absolutely, that. Absolutely. Yeah. That was kind of my intro into like, oh, you can use music for pure activism yeah. at the same time. Too. And, 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 and you know, all those dudes are like Harvard graduates. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, yeah. And, Tom and, 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 I, and I interviewed Tom Morello years ago. So he used to be in a group with uh, Boots from The Coup. Yes. Well, um, so I interviewed him like years and years ago. But like, they're just brilliant dudes. But I also, I think that. You know, what you were saying about the playlist thing, mm-hmm. there was a shift that happened for me making music that just changed. So when I was growing up, there was a thing where like hip hop artists, you know, the source used to have something called unsigned hype. Right. right. So if you yeah, was making yeah. if you was making music, and you weren't signed to a label. Mm-hmm. You were like, oh, I'm unsigned. Then then I don't know where the shift came. I don't know if it came. SoundCloud. From, well, it could have been that. SoundCloud started it. 
I, I don't know if it was like so LP before he was with Run the Jewels, he used to have an independent label called Def Jux. And it was their their tagline was independent as fuck. And so somehow, some way, the your brain shifted from saying I'm unsigned to I'm independent. Right? Mm. And and my brain shifted where I'm like, I'm I shouldn't try to be, you know, Miller Light and sell a million records. I'm a micro brewer. So let me make 300 pieces of vinyl, which I did for my album. I sold the motherfuckers in three weeks. So I can't tour because I have no product anymore. So I have to yeah. wait to reorder it. Right. But you find those three to 400 people that really rock with you mm. as opposed to go to this large number and trying to impress all these people. Like to me, the more smaller I make something, the more intimate you make it, that's more important. And you can make a living off of it. So I'm yeah. like, I'm not trying to like, you know, uh, uh, sell a million records and my brain is right. not even there. Yeah. But but there's artists that do great things that make money that don't give a fuck about radio at all. And right. during that same right. time, that's EP and LP took a whole different Absolutely. thing too. Yeah. Because someone could drop an EP and they're like, that's just literally because they don't have a label. Yeah. That's it. That's it. There's an empowerment where if you, if you can record your own shit, design your own artwork, you can do every part of your your album making process without any help. Yeah. You can you, you can shoot no a video with your phone. Yeah, yeah, you know. And mm-hmm. so and so that was that was the equalizer that I think hit. And I think what took it over the edge was the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Because yep. I don't give a fuck if you usually perform in front of fifty people or stadiums, everybody was in their motherfucking house with an yeah, acoustic yep. guitar. Yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yep. So so that this was the way, right? <laughs> right? And, and, Girl, and, leave your booze <laughs> by the bed. <laughs> even this room. Cut it. <laughs> Put that cash up up there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, you, so go ahead, you, you know Morgan Wallen and Jason Isabel. Yeah. And me, bro. Uh, yeah, you're right, bro. Solo. All right. Go so, oh, no, I was going to say something funny. Um, so, uh, working for the Free Times, I, I remember there was a, was, a, was a Jason Aldean that had the song with Ludacris. One oh, of those country oh. artists. Yeah, what was that? Uh, the, uh, for Ludacris. Yes. Damn. Yeah, yeah. It was only, it was just a couple years ago, right? Yeah, it was something recent. So, so this I is. I hope a, it wasn't Jason Aldean because he don't like those people in his small town. <laughs> well, listen, I, I think it was, it was all right. It was one. It was one of those guys. Please look it up. But I, I say this to say, you know, I've been writing for the free times for a long time. I, I, I used to be the crime blotter writer. I do my column work. I love the crime blotter. Crime blotter. Yeah, they they they. they Ludacris they, did Dirt Road Anthem with him. Was yeah. that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. So oh, check it out. That's a. Uh, I know that song because that is a. Uh, what's his face actually wrote that song? Ooh. Two different people, Colt Ford and um, Brantley Gilbert wrote that song, "Dirt Road Anthem." Oh wow! And okay. then, you know, well, you know, <laughs> yes. Oh, we know. So, so the free times. <gasps> my editor hit me up because I don't listen to All Dean at all. This is a couple of years. I think it's right before the pandemic. He's such a fake dude. <laughs> and and uh, my editor was just like, "Yo." They gave us tickets to this All Dean show. I know you don't listen to this type of stuff, but you'd be willing to go and write about it. And I was like, are you going to fucking pay me? And he yeah. was like, yeah. I was like, sure, I'll go. And he was like, really? He's like, yeah. So I invited one of my white homies as like security for me because just in case, I don't know, right? You know? right, right. <laughs> so, sometimes we need you to get us out of a jam, right? So, <laughs> security <laughs> or manager? <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. So, yeah. so it was just this real funny moment. We walked in there and there was no black folks in there. And my, my, friends, and my, and my, friend, and my friend was like, yo, don't worry. They're just going to think that you're um, Darius Rucker, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> so, so like we chill it. And that's the inside joke that we got. Then all of a sudden, Jason Allen was like, I got somebody I want to bring to the stage. Somebody y'all know well. Then all of a sudden, there's like a Waffle House sign to pop up, and Darius yeah. Rucker walks out. And oh, I'm like, oh, oh no, man. the chicken's up. Yeah, the chicken's up. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't the red light, just <laughs> I'm not even Darius Rucker. Damn, it's two Darius's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Darius Rucker. But the funny part, the, I think the, the, the funniest part was the, there was like these like group of girls in front of us, and they were really cute. But the thing was, they assume that if I'm there, I'm a fan. Right. right. So while the songs are going on, you know, you hit that moment when right. somebody looks at me. you, and they stare like, at you, and they want you to sing this, the lyrics with yeah, them, yeah. right? And I'm just looking at them, I'm like, oh, I'm just closing my eyes because <laughs> it just hits me. I'm trying to fake the fuck out of it. I could not wait to get that out of it. That was me at Incubus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was me. If, I remember, if I remember correctly, Jason Aldean, when he re- originally re- released it, he did all the rapping parts. And it, <laughs> really? It wow. was fucking awful. Like, Col- Colt Ford's awful, but at least he can rap a little bit. Ludacris is 
uh, verse on that was Luda. completely his own. No. Like, redid his own. Well, Luda's going to do his thing every time. Luda. Yeah, but when you hear like guys like, chilling on a dirt road, now the cops come to get me, I'm down a dirt road. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back after the break. Uh, we have uh, we have some breaking news on uh, Tupac's uh, murder. Oh my gosh! Only twenty six years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Trent, you're under so. arrest. <laughs> so we'll do this. We'll do that right after the break. This is the All About Nothing podcast. Hi, fellas. This is Prasad Parab from Amchi, Mumbai, India. You're listening to Barrett, Zach, and Trent on the All About Nothing podcast. Hi, right, welcome back to the All About Nothing podcast. Trent Clark, Zach King. We got Preach Jacobs here. What's going on? Thanks Preach cheap, cheap and cheap. Even <laughs> even during the break. What a treasure you are. Yeah. Stop it. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? You're the greatest thing. We're looking for a fourth. What are you doing? <laughs> I guess you're going to let me know. I'll pull up. Do so it. what kind of snacks y'all need? I'll bring them. Oh, just, oh, oh. see? That's, oh, don't say, that, say less about you. snacks, bro. <laughs> All you had to do was mention snacks. Zach's probably like, he's in. Yeah, brother. In like Flint. Uh, so... I, I did want to get into a little bit of seriousness because uh, just a couple. It was it was basically last Friday. Did you guys hear about uh, the, the the arrest in the Tupac murder? Yes, yes. I did. Yeah. You did. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is not news. Very, like, very nope. swift justice. Well, I didn't I didn't get any deets on it. I, I heard like a clip <laughs> yeah. a clip of a recording where he's like everybody was there. Yeah. Wasn't well, me. So uh, but this came, that came from a podcast he had did. Yeah, like, that was, well, well, Keith, that, Keith D talking about he did the the Vlad podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that was like 2020, right? Yeah, but they but, called him during the pan. He slipped up during the pandemic. But Keith like, also Keith, <laughs> Keith, <laughs> Keith wrote also book. wrote a book. Yeah, he wrote, he wrote a, a book about it. Yeah, okay. he basically wrote a book and 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 very nearly confessed. Yeah, I was gonna say was it OJ style? I didn't do it, but if I did, yeah. no, it was it, it was it, he basically <laughs> described the whole scene, mm-hmm. and then and then I think. In parts of it, did he mention that he 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 like? I th- I, I want to say I think he I think in the book he actually confessed that he took the car the rental car, got it painted, uh, and and did did some other stuff to it before he returned it to the rental company. Was yeah. that the BMW, the black one? I really wish we could just like put or I don't know if it was a BMW. And I, I think that was impounded. Maybe the car that, that they were driving. It was a Cadillac. Yeah, the, the yeah. white oh, the white yeah. Cadillac some, they were driving. Oh, yeah. somebody yeah, asked Keith, Tupac's Cadillac. They were yeah. Just, Keith D, Keith D was was driving. Keith D was in the back seat of. Was he a cop? Keith D. No, yeah. no. It was alleged that the the guy that was the um that that always you heard was the shooter that he was a off duty cop or something. Correct. Like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No. I still want to know who shot Biggie because that was the elevator shit. Yeah. Who? Mm. The Biggie. elevator. Biggie. Yeah. Oh, because we were in the same situation. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So. Essentially, last Friday, Mm -hmm. uh, Las Vegas authorities charged Keith D, 60 years old now, with murder. Davis, uh, Keith D, uh, he has a uh, long acknowledged that he was in the car that pulled alongside alongside Tupac. Uh, Authorities now claim that uh, Davis, that's uh, his name is Dwayne Davis. Uh, So good, good work on the name Keith D, because ultimately. Dwayne Davis. <laughs> could you imagine that? He's going to keep a lot name? of D in jail. Yeah, he could have drove Tell NASCAR for all we need. Yeah, apparently authorities now claim that Davis masterminded the killing as an act of revenge over an escalating gang feud. So in his 2019 book, uh, Compton Street Legend, uh, Davis just detailed the, the – the experiences that he had hid uh, the Cadillac and the gun after the shooting. So he, yeah. So in the book, mm-hmm. he also talked about hiding the gun. Uh, that uh, they had the vehicle repaired and repainted before returning it to the rail company. Las Vegas Sheriff. Uh, damn. Yeah. Like who damn, did they use? Like damn, damn. <laughs> that ain't no good. Gotta go to Mako. Yeah. yeah like no, who no. did you use? Yeah. Well, you have the money. I mean, you can probably get it done. I mean, Tupac would trigger have the money. Not the, the money. People, yeah. Not the trigger oh, man. Well, that sounds like an inside job. So that's shit's not making up. Las, right, not making Las Vegas sense. Sheriff Kevin. Do we have the Trent Spiracies on here. They said at a uh, <laughs> they said at a news conference on Friday that uh, although detectives had had plenty of evidence in the case, Davis's own admission gave new life to the investigation in the last five years. He says uh, we knew at this time that this was likely the last time to take a run at this case, successfully solve it. Uh, so here's here's essentially what authorities say happened. Well, Dave Chappelle proved he was probably still alive, right? Did he prove it? No, he was talking about oh. two box songs, oh, yeah, all yeah. like too current. Yeah. yeah, I was playing Grand, Grand Theft Auto on my PlayStation Two. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so the so the night of the shooting, members of a rival gang attended a Mike Tyson boxing match at the MGM Grand. Afterward, uh, Trey. Uh, Trevon Lane spotted Orlando Anderson in the elevator and recognized him as one of the rival gang members uh, who had tried to steal a death row necklace uh, from him during an earlier brawl. So Lane alerted Shakur, uh, Shakur, uh, who was uh, who had then actually participated in the attack on Anderson. So after learning of the attack, 
Davis, Keith D., uh, he, uh, he formulated a plan to exact revenge upon uh, Suge Knight uh, uh, and, uh, let me see, and, and Shakur. So in, uh, in furtherance of that, they acquired a forty caliber Glock firearm from a drug associate he had. Chief Deputy District Attorney Mark and I'm not going to pronounce his name, uh, told the court in the uh, announcing of the murder charge. So prosecutors allege that Davis and other Crips uh, members drove in a in two vehicles and then basically surrounded Shakur's vehicle, and then that's when the shooting started. Uh, when Davis got into his Cadillac, he handed the Glock over to two individuals in the back seat and uh, said that uh, Terrence Brown was driving, Anderson and DeAndre Smith were in, also in the car, and uh, as they drove west on Flamingo Road, they spotted the caravan with uh, Suge Knight and Shakur, and uh, there was an order for them to do a U-turn, to which they pulled around next to the vehicle. As they as they approached the rear of the uh, the, the rear of the uh, Shakur's bar, uh, vehicle, they fired a number of rounds in, uh, both striking Suge Knight and uh, Tupac. That's like that Nipsey Russell. Who did that push? order come from? Uh, that's, they're exactly. say, that's what they're saying. Is Keith D was the one that that basically came up with the idea to, to to do this. Can you imagine when they arrest Puff Daddy for uh Biggie's murder? You think <laughs> what? what? You think that you, Puff you, Daddy you really and, that? Puff Daddy and Biggie were like they they were they were I mean conspiracy wise, I can see why because he made a lot of money off of his catalog after he died. Yeah. And he then he's he like, don't worry about that. I'm gonna I'm gonna sample some sting. I'm gonna sing a good song about you. <laughs> he's still pay, he's still paying sting to this day. For sure. For that sample. Michael Jackson made a ton of money off the Beatles records. But they didn't. Well, well, they tried and Drake somebody. made some money off of Michael somebody Jackson. Somebody killed Michael then, Jackson, too, though. So, well, well, I mean, hold come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> what? What are we saying? You think. You think someone, what are we saying? You think someone murdered Michael, Michael Jackson? Michael had already made some bad decisions, bro. Bad decisions? The medicine he was getting was from a doctor. Yeah. yeah. So was Prince. Yeah. Shouldn't were, a doctor know how much to give you? Well, no, not in a non-clinical setting. No, not with an anesthe- without an anesthesiologist. Well, here's, here's what happened with Michael in the drug situation, because this is what happened with Michael and anything that happened with anybody to push back on him musically. Um, think about it like this. Let me backtrack a little bit. So Quincy Jones worked on um, Off the Wall, mm-hmm. which was... You know, Michael had albums before that, but that was the first album that he was just like a grown man, right? Mm -hmm. It was part R&B, part soul, part disco. Blew the fuck up. Then Thriller is the biggest album of all time. Then they do Bad, which is huge. Then all of a sudden, Michael was like, I don't want to fuck with Quentin anymore. Right. Which felt kind of weird because it's kind of like, well, you have your biggest success with this guy. Why don't you want to work with him? Whatever. Quincy talked about it and was just like, yo, I used to tell Michael the shit he needs to do. I used to tell Michael, like, dog, you need to stop with this bullshit. You need to stop with the surgeries. You need to stop whatever, whatever. So Michael found a way to, anytime somebody would call him out on his shit, he kind of distanced himself from it. But it had to be somebody on his level. Like, yeah. Quincy could say some shit to him. Paul McCartney could say some shit to him, which yeah, I have a, I have sure, a, sure, I have a Beatles sure. story with Michael that, mm. that'll, it's crazy too. But anyways, so what ends up happening, somebody as big as Michael, the issue with him was, he weighed like 106 pounds when he died. And he would go to these doctors asking for this medication, whether it was anxiety or depression or whatever, these horse tranquilizers. Reputable doctors yeah. are like, I'm not going to give you this. I'm not going to give you this. But it doesn't matter if a doctor is doing the right thing. It matters if you have a doctor willing to have a famous patient. Yeah. And so. And they have to be a registered anesthesiologist yes. to do to diminish the drug he died on. So, so the thing about it is, you know, you had a doctor that was more interested in having a famous patient than, mm. than you know his his Hippocratic oath or whatever. Yeah. Well, and ultimately, I think, I, I, regardless of who prescribed it to him, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson was going to find someone to prescribe it to him. For sure. Yeah. I mean, like, and that's, well, and and that's, that's, and that's what happened. And that's, that's what, what happened. Did. And that's what happened. I think. I think it's more an issue about you know the the want of celebrity or or proximity to celebrity yeah. more than anything else right and so you know the amount of drugs that michael was taking that meant you know, like he was 106 pounds right and yeah. so and, and and i don't know all the details of, of Prince's passing but i think that the the both of them being like some of the greatest like you know music of soul and r&b dying the way they did from medical overdoses kind of say like a lot like there's something to that right mm-hmm. where it's like there's a lot of suffering and pain that yeah. Prince was dealing with. Like Prince, I saw Prince when he would when he would dance, he had these heels on, he would jump off the stage every night. 
the amount of like pain that he would feel oh, in like yeah. his hips and all this type of stuff. So like the, the so to see them go out the way they did, I think that's kind of like I don't know, but but that's what I think kind of happened to Michael. I think mm-hmm. I think that he was just too fucking famous, right? And so sure. my, my Beatles Michael story. I have one after you. All right. So so there's always been this this theory that Michael was painted in his bad light for buying the Beatles catalog, right? It was it was always being dissed about it as if he was this terrible person, yada yada yada. He got the idea about um, publishing through Paul McCartney. He's like, you know, yeah. it makes sense. You know, you publishing is where the money's on. Why right? you come with me? <laughs> right. He's like, so so here's so here's what happened because the story never made sense to me because the way that it was always told, it was always told that Michael outbidded Paul McCartney. Really, for, for the Beatles, for the Beatles shit, mm-hmm. which makes no sense because Paul had the money too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Here's what happened. Um, when Sony was was putting it an auction, and the amount came out, I think the let's say it was twenty million, just for sake of argument, let's say it was twenty million. Paul went to Yoko, and was like, "Yo, let's go 50-50 on this." Yeah. Yoko was like, "It's too much. Wait for it to go down." Oh. And so Paul was going to say, "Well, you tell me the amount that you want to pay." I never should have trusted you, bitch. <laughs> right? Yeah. Paul was like, you pay the amount you want to pay, I'll pay the difference. But then Paul was just like, no, because if I own more than 51%, I'm never going to hear the fucking end of it. Right. So they just let it sit. And wow. Michael and Michael was like, wait, wait a minute. I see this, the pain of stuff is right here. You, you two are ignorant. <laughs> yeah, it's just ignorant. It's just <laughs> ignorant, right? <laughs> so, so Michael was just like, y'all going to let this shit sit here? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Paul was like, please, Michael, don't do it. He's like, yo, what the fuck? Buy it, yeah, hundred exactly. percent. Buy it, 100%. and Michael and Michael pulled out his cash app. Right? Yeah, yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna write a check. Like, um, how many Grammys do you want? I'll t- I'll throw in two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you know. What I mean? I'll show up right. at your house and take pictures. Yeah. Whatever uh, you want. You want Bubbles' daughter? Yeah, yeah, Bubbles' yeah. Oh my God, I mean, <laughs> she's yeah. Buble. Michael yeah, yeah. Buble, right? This is Buble, Buble. Yeah. All yeah. I mean, Michael like Jackson special when he was like, I'll just take three of these. Yeah, absolutely. Three of these. Yeah, and then the motherfucker's like, Michael, you might be in debt. He's like, quit buying faces, Michael. <laughs> I still think it was genius for Michael Jackson to buy the the entire album art, you know, everything for the Beatles. I, mm-hmm. I think that was absolutely That's genius. when the Jackson fa- family came back at Drake and was like, you can't, and he's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> mm-hmm. What the fuck are you talking about? Man? Yeah, I, I think I, I think that was the, the mistake that Paul did was that he was like, and I, I get what he was saying. He was just like, if I have more than 51%, then I'm going to be beat up. Now, that white lady owns all my music. <laughs> <laughs> now, the funny shit was, all right, the funny story we was talking about, like you know, the success of Elvis and Sinatra. Like, yeah. there was a story that I heard during Beatles Mania that they talked to Ringo about. What do you remember the most when you guys are like, you know, London invasion, British invasion, all that shit? shit. Well, <laughs> they they said, "What do you remember the most?" And they thought he was going to say, "Oh, the pussy was being thrown at me." He's like, "He's like, was oh. it when the band broke up?" <laughs> no, it was before. <laughs> they woke they, me up and said the band broke up. I was like, what? "I was like, I wasn't drumming anyway." Which, which, <laughs> right, which, which, fun, which funny drumming. enough, <laughs> which funny enough, uh, they they asked Paul back in the day, "Do you think Ringo is one of the best drummers in rock?" And he was like, "He's not even the, the best, best drummer, drummer in the Beatles." Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was yeah. like, "Oh, Ringo, go grab a smoke," yeah. and then Paul would just yeah. get on. Drums, right? <laughs> and he proved it in that doc. Yeah, too, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, get back. Like, yeah, get your, get back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you but, ain't gotta be here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but he's the first dude to show up too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so when they asked Ringo, what does he remember the most? He said that he used to hate it, and he said, "Why?" He was like, "Urine." What the fuck are you talking about? He said, "You gotta remember when we were getting on stage. These women, these young." Girls oh God. would faint, and when they would faint, piss they would them. piss themselves. Oh. And he said they would be on stage. The stench of urine oh, used to man. hit them on the stage. Yo, no, wonder why, be. no wonder why none of them look interested in girls when they were all screaming at them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like fuck. It smells like a loo. <laughs> I, well, I, that's I, why. That's why, like Paul and John were jerking each other off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah don't, that's crazy. Yeah. One hundred, dude. When when Bob Dylan Beat the and, Beatles. when Bob Dylan and uh, John Lennon met each other, they were both so high on heroin. All they did is stare at each other. There's a whole <laughs> fucking video of it. They're like, yeah, yeah. You're not saying anything. He's like, oh, I don't know. Like, yeah, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, what is Herwan? Heron, like the bird, like whatever. All right, here's my Michael Jackson trivia. So right. You seem to know a bit. Mm-hmm. Beat it. 
came out like 1985, 7? 87, maybe. 87, 88. Something around there. Who played guitar on that album? Slash. Nope. Who is it? Eddie Van Halen. Really? Okay, I should have known that. Yeah, I know that. How much did Eddie Van Halen get paid? Nothing. 80,000. Barrett nailed it. Yeah, I was gonna say I knew I, I knew I knew that there was there was early stuff that Eddie Van Halen did that that he received no payment wow. for. It well, wasn't even some so, of it. So well, Van, Van Halen was rocking at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But, but there he, was an agreement like contractually. Yeah, he would he would be he would basically be sourced out yeah. for, for songs. Well, so like like Michael Jackson like uh, he came up and he basically rewrote a couple verses mm-hmm. of "Beat It" to fix it. Like he was like, "Listen to me on this. Let me, let, let me do this. I could we could put some sauce on it and." The contractual agreement to Van Halen was you can't get paid to do this, and then they were they were like, "Well, why did you do it?" He goes, "At the Michael time, Jackson. we didn't." <laughs> well, at the time, they're like, "It's Michael Jackson for one." He goes, "But I'm just gonna play it for this black kid." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it matter? What's it matter? Because I mean, beat it. Did he get credited for that, or was the credit? Nope. Yeah, I was gonna no say he did. Nope. No there was there was there was Man, there were crazy. things that there were things that Van Halen, Eddie Van Halen did. That he never got credit for, right. it, but you only found out for him because he was he'd be on Howard Stern. He's like, oh yeah, I, was, I played guitar in there. or Pierce Morgan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. But and then when you listen to it again, you're like, who else would yeah. be like? Yeah. That's like yeah. you're like that. Of course, that's Eddie. <laughs> A fucking course. Shit was bobbing. So next thing I want to talk about, we tried doing that. That's what that's what we our whole thing was that. about. Uh, news broke yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, that uh, Kevin McCarthy has been outed mm-hmm. as the uh, the Speaker of the House, and when uh, you thought the Republicans couldn't get any fucking dumber, I need I just need somebody to pat me on the back. Oh, Okay, can, can you, you call can I this? Get a little, uh, if you remember the ep, you're not going to really do it. <laughs> wow. So, do you remember the episode? <laughs> there you go. Thank you, appreciate it. Burp the baby. Do you, burp the baby. Do you do you remember? Thank you, thank you, Trent. Thank you, Zach. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's that. I'm, I'm Trent. I know, I know. But you tried. <laughs> you it can't really intense. tell. Oh, camera! It looked like I did. You wouldn't even know. It looked. It looks like I'm doing it. <laughs> Your poor wife. <laughs> All right. So, a uh, couple episodes ago, it was just. Zach and I, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, you did call it. I laid into Kevin McCarthy. I said he had no balls. If mm. he is, if he is, if he is more concerned about keeping his job than he is with actually doing something for the country, then he's a Republican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but basically, I said I, I think I said during that episode that that Kevin McCarthy needs to grow a pair and actually do something. If he if he cares at all about the country, then go ahead and figure out how to get this debt crisis or the the, the, the shutdown stopped. Figure out how to get the country budgeted for the next year, or or, or whatever it takes to avert a shutdown. And this is the Senate, the uh, House, uh, the House. House. So, like when he started, he was like, "What's that noise?" Lauren quit jerking off that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a time and a place <laughs> for Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. it's Beetle, it's like, Why Beetlejuice Beetle? the musical. <laughs> Why? He's like, do you want your Beetlejuice? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, but yeah, so 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 basically, I, I think I deserve I deserve credit for finally pushing Kevin McCarthy to show that that he could potentially care about the country at least a little bit enough mm. to put his job on the line. No, Matt Gates and deployed. see what you did? Matt, you got him kicked out of that bitch. No, so, that's not necessarily You want him to thing. grow balls and then he grew balls and then lost his job. The, I knew he lost his the, job. The, the, the thing that, that, that's worse is that there's it, uh, seven Republicans that agreed with Matt Gates. Yeah, mm-hmm. so 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 with all that being said, mm-hmm. Gates had to make it very clear that he wanted McCarthy to end his ethics. Mm-hmm. Like for the last the last full I don't know, three or four years. Like we've, we've, we've been hearing nothing but all of these things that Matt Gates allegedly did as far as like sex trafficking, because he took his underage girlfriend across state lines. Yeah, what if he didn't talk about that anymore? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially there was an ethics investigation in the house that was, that was investigating these charges against uh, Matt Gates. And the deal that was made was that if, if Matt Gates went ahead and pulled in these, right flank Republicans to go ahead and get uh, Kevin McCarthy elected that it would uh, that Kevin McCarthy would eventually go ahead and just nullify the investigation and just sweep it under the rug. Well, he never did. So this is, this was basically a very personal thing. So Matt, it was very personal. Matt Gates basically got Kevin McCarthy ousted because yeah. in, in with the help of the Democrats, because and, and, and all Democrats voted, and he went to Lauren Boebert and fucking Mad Chad Vag. Yeah, and was like, "Listen, you want to jerk people off in theaters? I'm so there." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. I need your help. Yeah. So <laughs> don't, don't 
My zipper's fine. Listen, Lauren. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do good here. Like it's it's it, it What it's, is wrong with you? It has never been this has never been done in the history of uh, yeah, uh, no, it's crazy. the house, serious. ever. Like it's it, he he literally rallied seven other people. And that's all it took. That's all it took. Because because essentially and the Democrat like the Democrats the, there was there was there were reports that the Democrats had thrown Kevin McCarthy a bone and said, we will work with you. We will save you if you do this. And, and there are no Democrats that admit to that conversation ever happening, but the Kevin McCarthy's fate was sealed when he went on television and said, I, I can offer the Democrats nothing. I will, I will not work with the Democrats whatsoever to which they said, Oh, All right, cunt. Yeah. But, Matt Gates wants to oust them. Sure. But, we'll but, help you but, out with but that. I, here's my question. though. All, all of them. Yeah. But here's my question, though. I, I I think that's a pivot that might seem more intentional than not. Because I think that, you know, years ago, I'm mean, not in the, the distant past, you would have people wanting to be career politicians. Right. But then you see Mitch McConnell. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. And that's what he, make, Matt Gates wants to be Mitch McConnell. One. I, I don't I don't think he wants to be that. I, I think I think here's my theory. I think that these guys are learning that I can have. Like the influence of politics without having to be politicians anymore, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So if he goes on and says, "I got nothing for Democrats," man, that motherfucker is going to get money from his base for the oh, rest for of his sure. life, right? You know what I mean? Well, and the, so, whole time, well, the, the whole time that Matt Gates, the whole time that they were they were holding the voting, mm-hmm. literally, I, I got I got fifteen or sixteen messages from Max Ga- Matt Gates campaign asking for money. Yeah. Like, and I'm not I, I'm not like why is he messaging me? Because you know you got the, the money, bear. That's a, the money. That's a doggy dog thing, right? <laughs> you don't agree. They ate Kevin McCarthy's ass alive, mm-hmm. right? And and it wasn't just Republicans; it was it was those eight, right? Mm-hmm. Those intently far right eight people mm-hmm. who went in and ate his ass alive, and none of them are going to go. Do not now. Kevin McCarthy is a weak individual. Oh yeah, just like Trump did to all those president to Lindsey Graham, mm-hmm. to Ted Cruz, Chris Christie, mm-hmm. Chris, to all of them. He's a weak individual. So. This group is eating themselves but, alive. But, he, but here's the thing about one of the things that drove me crazy, and one of the columns that I wrote for the state newspaper, I wrote a I wrote a column about when um <laughs> hey, that's on top. I I wrote a column about, about um I was disappointed that Jamie Harrison didn't didn't get the seat. And yeah, absolutely. And, 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 and I think the whole state was. Well, I tell you, apparently they weren't because you know <laughs> Lin, Lindsay. It was a landslide. Yeah, like I it know, was you know, know. And, and and so it. It made me realize that just because the rest of the country sees this as one thing as Jamie being this great guy for for a position, South Carolina, this the motherfuckers like, are not yeah, on right. Side, bro. And so when I thought about Lindsey, Lindsey's had his seat for twenty years. The person that had it before him was um was Trump Thurman. Thurman. Thurman for fifty, yeah. right? So you have seventy years of the same ideology, the same type of shit, whatever. So what kills Ish. me about yeah. except for Strom Thurmond was into black people and didn't tell people. <laughs> So but he wouldn't yeah, say Lindsay it publicly. Yeah. Black dudes, but won't say it out loud. I, I got, I guess, I guess, I guess the stories about that too. But, but, but the thing is, what bothers me about Lindsay, right? Here's here's one thing I say about Trump. Trump is a deplorable human being, but I also feel like when he says these crazy things, I think he believes what he's saying. Oh, I think right? he does too. Like I think. I think that when he says this shit, he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong. Dementia he, sucks. He thinks he's making yeah. sense, right? And and we, I'm going to get back to that. And we, we, I would say both sides of the aisle built that monster. I'll get to that oh, yeah. in a second. But I also would say what bothers me about Lindsey is that when before Trump got the Republican nomination, Lindsey was dogging him. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. Nikki Haley was dogging him. You give a dude's uh, phone Tim, number out Tim, to everybody. Tim Scott was dogging him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that all of a sudden, when it's convenient, that they just kind of just change, like we don't remember none of this shit. Oh, yeah. Right? I think that when you're saying that certain Republicans might be embarrassed or this and this and that, I don't, I think shame is thrown out a long time ago. I yeah. think, I think that being a professional Republican, and put it like this, I would say, Theoretically, we might feel like morally, you know, liberals want to be the, the the moral standard, right? Because it's more inclusive. It's like, you know, we want to focus on LGBTQ issues. We want to focus on BIPOC people. We want to focus on different religions, this and this and that. So you think, theoretically, the moral high ground is there. Mm-hmm. Republicans are amazing politicians. Oh, yeah. 
because they don't they're like the worst gang ever they're like we don't give a fuck about our except our gang if you don't fuck with our gang fuck you come to death row that's exactly what they are right and so and so what kills me is when i hear these guys spewing out shit that they know is wrong, that they know is untrue. Mm-hmm. Those are the people that are the most dangerous. Trump is dangerous, Absolutely. but but he's saying what he believes. Well, right? he wrote the book on it, right? So mm-hmm. like he goes, you don't have to say the true shit. Mm-hmm. You say the half true shit mm-hmm. and bend it your way and say it like you know it's true. Well, I think Trump also well, that's business minded. I well, don't. That's 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 not what the fuck needs to lead the country. Like when you go, the country uh, is a business. Oh, yeah, it shouldn't be. The company, the, but it's a business. It, but that's, it's a business. It's, well, <laughs> but but, but this Trent, is a, this Trent, is big business. But Trent, do you want do you want the company to go the direction of just being a business? Do you want it to be the type of place where, let's say, let's say the country name doesn't, one con- name one company that you work for that actually cared about the employees that it has. I think my company cares about the employees. I think mine too, because at South Carolina Public Radio, we care about you. <laughs> Please call 800-256-8535 today. And for sure, I'll give you the opposite of that. I want someone who is a scientist or a teacher or somebody to be president, somebody who's open to understanding and learning. If Neil deGrasse Tyson was president tomorrow, I love Neil. Mm-hmm. See him live. Love mm-hmm. Neil. If he came up, he's You're like. You're going to plug the fact that he, he saw him live. Oh, sorry. My bad. Yeah. I was I was. If Neil goes, we're diverting, we're diverting all of our resources to go into the moon. I'd be like, time out, Neil. That's not what it's all about, right? Yeah. I'd be like, Neil's an asshole now because all Neil cares about is going to the moon. Like, it's it's the same thing. Trump never gave a shit about anything other than what they told. And he surrounds himself with an echo chamber, right? There ain't nobody going to tell Trump. That's, I think that's a bad idea because then he calls you a faggot and tells you to leave, right? Like that kind of shit. You want the country to do well, you invest in the people. It, it exactly. Can't, it can't be run like a business. You have to – look, there are people that are not going to be able to take care of themselves, so you make sure that the country is taking care of them. We can afford to yeah. do it. You need politicians who – like, dude, what happened to having a statesman like Barack Obama? For yeah. One? Like someone – even if you didn't agree with him, at least he articulated to a degree that you understood why you didn't agree with him. Well, I, I think I think. But they brought, Barack was a one of one. <laughs> it shouldn't well, be a one. Uh, well, of that's one. well, that's that's the thing about it. It's like Barack had to be this amazing guy yeah. in order to run, but Trump just had to be rich and white, right? And so, yeah. but 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 here's <laughs> but here's the thing that I think is an issue when I hear people talk about it all the time, and this is one of the things I think needs to shift. And I don't remember this happening until kind of recently is that I think America has this obsession with people being billionaires. And I think yeah. it's trickled with everything. You hear rappers talking about, it's, you know, Kanye going on his rants, he's like, it's not about millions, it's billions. You hear people, you know, Jay-Z and Beyonce talking about billions. You hear people talking about fucking how much money that uh, they spent on Twitter. And who did Trump pardon? <laughs> exactly. Kodak, right. Black and fucking Willow Wayne. <laughs> now, but, and my thing about the billionaire thing is that it's impossible to be worth billions of dollars without putting the suffering of people um without, without just ignoring the in suffering the of people view. right right no, no so, one should be a billionaire exactly by 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 default it means you had to do some crazy terrible shit to get there right. but the reality of it is when you think about it when i think of my heroes when i think of the martin luther kings or the malcolms or the mandelas i never gave a fuck or knew how much money they were worth yeah, right no, and You're so right. and so there's been this shift that we believe that because you know someone might be a billionaire we think they're a great businessman and not because they were afforded certain things that they can just leapfrog certain shit that's where i I think the disconnect has been right, and so when did we stop criticizing good and bad ideas? Well, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that I've learned personally that that just really threw me off, right? So for like in 2015, you'll get a kick out of this. I briefly <laughs> ran for city council. I say briefly ran. It was kind of like a, 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 a brisk walk or a slow walk. It wasn't well, a, it you, wasn't a real, little toe. It wasn't a little toe. Well, well, you I did a little tink tink. Well, I I did it because I had I had you know some folks that I knew that was just like hey you know it'd be kind of cool to have a young black guy um, in city council that is a part of the arts community and this and this and that and in my mind I was like it's not about me winning it's about me kind of creating this ideal that this voice of a different of a certain demographic a young hip hop dude this matters the voice would have mattered well here's the thing here's the thing that dis- that disappointed me facts was that. The guy whose seat that I was going after, when he won his seat, he raised over eighty thousand oh, dollars. Yeah, the, the guy, the guy that ended up getting that seat that I ran and kind of fell back on, he raised a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah. Jeez! So, so for a job that doesn't pay, but it's, what? It's a part time job, yeah. sixteen grand a year, right? So that's why when you hear people on council, they're either real estate agents or they have like a profession that pays a lot of money, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. Right. But I say that to say, 
local politics should be, hey, I'm in the community. I want to fucking help out. Yeah, yeah. Let me let me dedicate my time because I, I want to invest in this to make sure this community does well. As soon as you start saying that local community, in order to help the local community, you got to raise a quarter of a million dollars, That's all insane. of a sudden... It's a disconnect oh, immediately. Yeah, absolutely. You know, oh, yeah. so so I don't know when that shift or how that possibly happened, but I think that that the two things I learned, I, I hated that. And the second thing that I learned was I never want to be in politics again. I realized I can do more being an artist that's politically active absolutely. as opposed to a politician like that's an artist, Mike. right? I mean, for, for the most part, yeah. Because, no, because think about it like this. If, if Killer Mike goes on tour... And and his album Michael is amazing. Very if, good if, album. If he goes on tour and does, I don't know. Let's say he does, you know, uh, fifty shows, mm. and every venue is is five five thousand people. Mm. You know, you have the ability to really speak directly to a quarter of a million people, right? Right. We, right. we just talked about Taylor Swift putting out that link to vote Democrat. Oh or yeah, yeah. 100%. So like it, Well, to to register to at least to <laughs> register to vote, but like she's put in the past, like Donald Trump ain't the one. Yeah. Right. So like. No, that, that that's the, that's influence that's un un I mean, encumbered by so ultimately, exactly. ultimately exactly Jersey sales yeah. are up right now from ultimately, all the Swifties. Ultimately, exactly <laughs> what you what you're saying was the whole reason that I made the decision not to run for state house mm-hmm. this coming election was because the guy that I was going to be running against mm-hmm. literally didn't campaign and brought in more than eighty thousand yep. dollars. Didn't have to campaign because I live in this area mm-hmm. and this area is who elects him mm-hmm. and. The only way that I could potentially even get him to acknowledge my existence, mm-hmm. uh, despite the fact that we had an argument in my front yard, uh, <laughs> was that I would have to run as a Republican to primary because the only election that counts in this particular district Absolutely. is going to be that primary That's election. It. Which mm-hmm. is why I don't shit on Judd so hard because I saw yeah. what he did. You see what he's trying to do. Well, like, why wouldn't you go sleep or sell on somebody? Mm-hmm. Well, I, right? I, I don't know that. And, and, and again, we haven't not had. To, not to say. We I mean, we need to get him in here but, so he can speak but, for himself. But, 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 but I, I, I get I what you're saying. At some point in time, you know, politics is politicking, right? Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I get it. And that's the other thing about it is that it's not just a straightforward, I want to do good so I shall do good thing, right? Yep. And so, yep. but, but. The thing about it is I think that like there's this big misconception is that somehow we have this misconception that we work for the politicians when these motherfuckers work for us. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, and and like for an example, um next week I'm doing the um what do they call it? The night out thing or the national night out thing, which is something with law enforcement is doing in communities, oh, okay. right? And so they want me to DJ it. And and me being this black guy that's been very vocal about, you know, the relationship between young hip hop culture and cops, I was very, very hesitant, right? Sure. Um, but I'm going to tell you something that was really, really important for me that, that I realized. So years ago when I was doing the city council thing, I said, let me figure out how I can do civically engaged things and see what's just free. So anybody that's listening, your, your police departments, look them up. There's something called, it might be called something different in different cities or different states, but it's something called the Citizens Police Academy, where you can sign up for a 10 week course. They got to do like a, a background check on you, but it's a 10 week course that if you want to go to the local police department, they will show you. 10 weeks of this is how we process arrests. This is how internal affairs work. This is how the K-9 unit works. This is how SWAT works. Kind of like police you, academy. Pretty much. But, yeah. but, but, you know, but, but you're not trying to be a cop. But what you're saying is. You I, get to observe. Yes. And what you realize is whatever neighborhood that you're in, you can go to whatever police department is in yep. your district and be like, yo, who's the motherfucking cops that patrol my neighborhood, that patrol my street, that patrol my block? I can call these motherfuckers directly. So my issue is same thing with ride alongs. So exactly, with ride-alongs. absolutely right. Mm-hmm. So why I want to do a program like this or do the night out thing is if you're in a community with young black and brown kids, I I don't want your first interaction being with them when you pulling them over. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be like, yo, hey, see this face? Yeah. Let me make a joke that you gonna remember. If mm-hmm. you see me wearing a nice jersey, be like, oh, that's the guy wearing the Hank Aaron jersey. Whatever. Okay, remember this shit, yeah, right? Yeah. That's the equity that I need. That's the currency that I need. But I also need to be in a situation where, you know. We have a, a dialogue where when I'm calling you, I don't want to handicap my humanity because I'm afraid. Give you a story. So a few years ago, it was Christmas Eve night. Technically, it was Christmas morning, but it was Christmas Eve night, Christmas Day. It was like 2 in the morning, and I wanted to get something to eat. And I'm like, hmm. And I live downtown Columbia. And I was like, the only place that was open was a West Columbia McDonald's. So I go to the McDonald's. Get food. When I'm coming back, I'm driving on um, Gervais Street. The brick one on the corner? Yes, absolutely. So I'm driving on Gervais Street. 
I see on Gervais Street, there's like a there's like a yard, mm-hmm. like a house. There's a woman laid out on the ground. Like laid out. Yeah. I stopped my car, I dial nine one one, and I was like, yo, there's somebody on the ground. Um, I don't know what happened. It was like, are they moving? I said, I don't know. I'm waiting because I'm making sure if she got shot or something, I want to get out of the car or whatever. So I'm talking to this, I'm talking to this dispatcher, telling her where I'm at. And I'm saying to her, I want to get out of the car and check on them. And I can and, and there's this this kinship of black folks when they hear each other. Mm. She can tell that I was black and tell she's black. She's like, no, no, no. She was just like, nah, I wouldn't do that. And I, and I heard what she was telling me. Because if that lady was shot or hurt, and I'm the one that called the fucking cops. Right. Somehow, some way. Oh, Johnson, he's still here. Bang. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and luckily when the cops got there, and I had to wait and the cops came and questioned me, and it was all this, you know, I stayed in the car, whatever. And luckily the lady was okay. She was like, she was sick and she passed out because she didn't have a medication, so she was saved. But the thought of if she was dying and I could have gotten out of the car and helped her and she passed away because I was so afraid. Yeah. That's something that terrifies mm, me. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, but that's a real fucking fear. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, when them, when them lights pop up, I'm scared of the motherfucker. Right. That's, so, yeah. so I was in a situation like that too. I, I, I mean, it, not, I'm not black, of course, but like, not, what <laughs> you guys couldn't tell. No, Let's see man. your credit score. <laughs> <laughs> you, got like, you, you guys like this 500. <laughs> no, I was like, uh, yo, Oh, you black. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, but it was the same situation. Like mm-hmm. I had, I found a girl drunk driving in a ditch, knocked out in the vehicle with it running, just mm. messed oh, wow. up. Wow. And so I was like, shit. Called nine one one, and it, I was talking to him. I said, I'm running up while I'm talking to you. I'm running up to this gas station where I know that Lexington County sits. Mm-hmm. Found the dude. I said, you got to come with me. But the whole time I'm scared. I'm like, what if he thinks I yep, did? Like, exactly. What, what if I was involved? Like, what if this is Hey, buddy, why don't you stick around for a little bit while we yeah, make sure yeah, she's yeah. okay? Yeah, absolutely. And how did you know about this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, work at 3 o'clock at Amazon, yeah. shit yeah. shift. Just like 3 o'clock in the morning. But like, oh, Amazon. luckily they got her out. And what was funny <laughs> You're is like. on it, man. He's, he's hired. <laughs> what was funny is I got to sit on the hood. The cop was like, no, you can stay here. I was like, you got to ask me questions. He's like, no. Nah. Yeah. I'm like. Well, I feel like I should hang out in case highway. He's like, no, yeah. he like has Please. questions. No, but he was like, go ahead, I don't care. Well, where where can where can people find information about the night out? Um, I think that the police station that I oh the night out. I'm sorry, I'm thinking about the well the Citizens Police Academy. Um, you can just go to any local police uh, website and you can just type in Citizens Police Academy or something where you can say um, local I- engagement with law enforcement. Something will pop up for that. Um, for the for the night out, you can go to all my socials. You can go to Preach Jacobson on Instagram, um, and I have that on there. I think. I'll, I'll get the I'll get the information. I'll share. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll share. Yeah, share, I'll share, share. Yeah. Link in the bio. You know what yeah, I mean? link in the bio. That's what we do. <laughs> Listen, what I've been doing with these shows is that when I get them, I just try to make one link because I don't remember anything. Right. Um, also, while we're here, it's when, when will this episode be out? Monday. Monday. Okay, cool. So on Wednesdays, starting October the 11th, I am doing a vinyl thing at a Drip Coffee. It's called Recca Wednesdays, like Recca Sto. Um, Very cool. And. I'm just going to be playing records. So it's going to be from 5 to 7 o'clock. Um, we're going to do it October the 11th. Hopefully we can do it. It's really cool. The old the old person that used to do it died, didn't he, recently? Or oh, that's this. Who, who's doing stuff at Drip? Who's doing vinyl? I'm not vinyl. It was the guy that they used to have. Uh, it was another DJ. I can't remember. Nikki used to tell me about it. Goldfinger? I'm not sure, but he somebody died. If I'm not mistaken. rest in peace to Goldfinger. But Goldfinger was a house DJ that I've known for a while. I don't know if he did anything at Drip, but it might it might have been him. If it was a few years ago, okay. Um, I know he lost his uh his battle to cancer. It was really really dope DJ. That that's from here. If that's the same person, if not, I'm Maybe. still shouting him out anyway. Um, yeah. What we, what we do know needs to happen now mm-hmm. is all four of us go on a ride along. <laughs> and record it. Well, what, what with the I'd rather go ride along with, with AJ with, from our with, with, from, with AP. The, with, just, you go with AJ. Oh, AJ, you yeah. your fucking mag hat. Well, You'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the safest one in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah. Look at these libs beside me. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you work for NPR? I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is Trick is the right one. He goes, I ain't doing this because the hat. <laughs> <laughs> And if you enjoy these shows on NPR, you can also listen to my South Carolina <laughs> Public Radio. Go to 800-256-8535 and donate today. Or become a sustaining star. Whatever amount that you want to choose, $5, $10, $15 once a month, you can set it and forget it. Once again, it's 800-256-8535 or go to SouthCarolinaPublicRadio.org. What's funny is I was yelling when he was saying that the whole time, but his voice overpowers uh, everything. <laughs> 
I'll just tell I'll him just who's say. your granddad. Let him, let him know who's your granddad. <laughs> <laughs> let him know who your granddad. <laughs> Shout out to my grandfather. We're in the presence <laughs> of, of, of royalty. Uh, royalty, man. Yes, um, my, my grandfather was uh, the, the the king of Zamunda. Shout Correct. out to James Earl Jones. Right, we, <laughs> and say it again. Looking for a son of king. I am looking for my son of king. <laughs> 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 Shout out to my grandfather. So, so Shout James out L. To Jones, my grandfather. you know, man, preach it. Was, it was fantastic having you on the show. Goddamn Mufasa, Verizon Wireless. This is CNN. This is CNN. This is CNN. All right, I think I think that's probably gonna do it for this episode. Yeah, man, preach. Oh, that was it. Preach. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'll be back next week. Yeah, <laughs> tell, me, tell me what what flavor of funyuns I want. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for yeah, being on the show. Yeah, thank you all for having and, me, and, man. And for everything we discussed, please check the show notes. Uh, and, and as well, uh, uh, you got a fundraiser uh, starting up soon. So you he has work. to plug his album. Do you have a phone number that you can give people for uh, uh, public radio uh, uh, television? Uh, public radio, you can 800-256-8535. But I was going to break a little bit of news here. Please. Um, it'll be public very soon. Uh, so me and my great friend, uh, Eric, who's part owner of bourbon dragon room and black rooster and cool. his wife, cat. We just, we saw that it was a deficiency in the community We're big art fans. And, um, we wanted to be able to have a space that focus on BIPOC art, which is a, a personal thing for me and, and artists that, you know, not just trying to have someone do art that's like really big. I'm, I'm really interested in being like a first time gallery for people. Um, we're partnering up and we're opening an art gallery in the Vista. It's, hey. it's going to be called <laughs> it's going to be called Soul House, but House is going to be H A U S for the art movement, and uh, we plan to be open for Vista Lights. That so, is cool. so we're getting all the stuff done now. So That's any artists, any artists out there that want to, um, you know, get some stuff on the walls because we want to be fully functional when we open up, and we're going to do some stuff like some shows and and, and to me. I'm more interested in being kind of a community thing where, because yeah, yeah. me growing up doing hip hop, I knew it was difficult to find dope spots downtown to do stuff. So I want to do like poetry readings. I want to do book book signings. I want to do real intimate things and be kind of a, a fixture in the community. So um, yeah, I'm opening an art gallery. Man, that is too cool. Yeah, I'm excited. Man, that's that is rad. so cool. Yeah. No, yeah. You, please go to my um, GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> scan, scan the QR code. <laughs> this one's legit. Goddamn it. <laughs> You heard it here first, people. Yeah, man. It's that not. Is, yeah, it's, it's not even cool. in the papers yet. So yeah, y'all guys are getting the scoop. Yeah, I yeah. wanna. Yeah, we'll we'll get details on that. All right, I absolutely. Come check that out. Yeah, man. Bear, do you have anything cool. else before I close oh, his, out? his album? He has to let people know where to find his album. Oh so, my. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, my album is uh, called Francis. It's named after uh, my grandmother. Actually, this, the the artwork is her signature. Oh, that's. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a hip hop record with production from a producer out of uh, Detroit named Tall Black Guy who's worked with Jazzy Jeff and a bunch of other folks like Little Brother. Um, Doug Infinite has done stuff with Common. My homeboy Chris Charles was based out of Durham, North Carolina. It's a very, 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 um, it's a very soulful South Carolina hip hop centric record. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I've enjoyed um, it. You can find it on all of the digital platforms. Just type in Preach Jacobs, listen to Francis. And we got some videos off the project, too. I'll get yeah, those yeah. to you as well. Oh, yeah. So, so yeah, really excited about that, man. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, thank Honestly. you. We're sold out of the vinyl. Um, we're getting some more coming up soon. I still have some cassette tapes that we're doing. And I want to do like a MTV Unplugged performance. Like, I don't want to be like talking about making stuff intimate. I want to do a small show. 30 people intimate talk about songs talk about the stories perform these joints um so i'm working on that right now so maybe I you guys new, posted. new brooklyn tavern one last show maybe. oh we'll see uh have that have that bucket for that water for yeah. Karis <laughs> <laughs> when it rains well, right hey i play acoustic guitar so we can do it unplugged oh let's do it i'm down all right yeah, you know i do very cool all right i'm now the fourth uh, member of this podcast so that's i'll right. see you next week you that's right <laughs> <laughs> all right well that is gonna do it for episode number 176 yeah that's right uh, we are the All About Nothing podcast. Thank you to Barry Gruber, Trent Clark, Preach. Uh, he's going to be here around again for the, yeah, all we'll the other episodes. We'll uh, see him again. You'll hear his voice on something. Absolutely. <laughs> Links to all of our podcast uh, episodes, podcast platforms, merchandise, social media are all available on our webpage, theallaboutnothing.com. If you think you have a financial model of giving away free content and entertainment is silly and you're in the giving mood, why not become an official nothinger and support the show? Visit theallaboutnothing.com and click on our yeah, support link party. near the top of the page. You can subscribe monthly at a varying level of membership tiers or click on the tips link and, you know, max it out. Give a donation. 
Let us know. He doesn't like when I play with the board. No, I do. <laughs> I, you was going to mess me up, and I was going to press the wrong button when it was time to end. I know what you're hey. trying to do. If you'd like to join on the uh, conversation with us, we're here to listen. So please join in. People. Our Discord channel, uh, uh, click on the banner on our webpage, and you'll find us there. And we are always on there. So Discord us. Uh, please subscribe to the show. Like and follow on Facebook and Twitter. And share us with your family and friends, unless you don't like them. But even if you don't, <laughs> please share it anyways. You know, spam them with it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Y'all stay safe. And, you know, I had a new one. Have a week. <laughs> no, no. You got a new one. Yeah. All right. Let's hear it. We're going to get through this. Period. Life, general. All right, Let's work. get through this. All right, man. You got real sensitive. All right. <laughs> the All About Nothing podcast is produced and engineered by me, Bear Gruber, and recorded at the podcast studio at GOT Sound Studio in Lexington, South Carolina. GOT Sound Studio is owned and operated by Neek the Geek. Visit gotsoundstudio.com for details on studio rental, production, and engineering. Thanks to Cake for our intro music, Sick of You. You can follow everything Cake the Band at cakemusic.com. Thanks to Muff the Producer for our outro music. You can follow Muff on Instagram at Muff the Producer. Thanks to Trent Clark, a.k.a. DJ Lonzo. Join him weekly at the venue in Columbia, South Carolina for the Saturday All-Star Drag Brunch and Sundays at the Review Drag Brunch. You can also contact Trent for all your entertainment needs. Trent at theallaboutnothing.com and on Instagram at therealdjlonzo. You can also phone him 803-262-7982. Thanks to Zach King. You can follow him on Instagram at kingzach07 and on Twitter at carolinaking21. I am Barrett Gruber. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Barrett Gruber or visit my link tree slash Barrett Gruber. Want to support the show? Visit our webpage, theallaboutnothing.com com and become a member. There are several tiers available, including memberships that give you early access to episodes as well as exclusive content. Visit theallaboutnothing.com. To find links to our social media, merchandise, and past episodes, visit theallaboutnothing.com. If you'd like to be heard on the show, you can call and leave us a message. Dial 803-672-0533. If the time between these episodes is more than you can handle, check out our partner podcast. Zach and I host What the Pod Was That with Carrie Simmons. Visit whatthepodwasthat.com for links and details. And me takes a deep dive down on the rabbit hole in episodes of Welcome to Wonderland. Available on all the podcast platforms. Visit WTWLpod.com for details. Check out DJ Lonzo's Top 5. Available on all of the podcast platforms. As well, you can listen to the political and social conversation between Dr. Jamella Brooks and Bill Kimmler on Black, White, and Blue in the South. Available wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe and share this show. If you're on YouTube, please like and hit the notification bell. The All About Nothing podcast is a product of Big Media. Copyright 2023. Thank you for listening. The preceding podcast is a product of Big Media and copyright 2023, all rights reserved.